How do you test your strategy? How do you journal and review your trades? Please make a video about backtesting. Backtesting journal, backtesting data collection. Please, please, please. Of course. Of course, yes. And also thanks for the support on the last video. We're almost we're almost at 400 subs right now, so we're growing really big. Before I show you how I backtest my strategy, I need to get something to eat because I'm starving, man. And I can't lose those gains. I just want to update you guys because like I said before, we have we have grown a lot on this channel. And with the growing also comes uh, scams and other stuff like that. So just be aware that some people can message you and that it can be a fake account. And also one last thing is that I got one comment on my video. A guy was asking what camera I use. And I know I showed in my previous video the one that like 10x my productivity in 14 days. At the end of that video, I showed that camera that I, that I got, but I actually ended up returning that one because the image quality wasn't that good and there's been this thing like going around the internet that the early batches of that camera has been like, it has had focus issues so and I think mine had focus issues because obviously the image wasn't that good but right now I only record on my phone and that works just fine but I want to get an action camera for when I go travel but I'm just gonna finish eating then I'm gonna show you guys how I backtest I'm gonna show you a little backtesting session of how I collect data when I test my strategies. And I'm also going to show you how to use this uh, backtesting template. It's available in the description for you to download. I'm going to backtest on EU right here. I ended my last backtesting session at around 18th of November. So I'm just going to mark out right there, 8 a.m. That's the beginning of uh, London for me, for my time. So the first thing I do is that I look on the daily and I don't have the replay tool. Just imagine that this is not there. It really doesn't matter if, you, if you're if you honest with yourself. So I still know what rules I'm going to follow. So I don't care about, I don't care that I see this price right there. Anyways, so I look at the structure here on the daily and I see that we were in a bearish trend and then we broke uh, the protected high right there. And right now we're in this range right here with this is the protected low and this is the next target if we imagine that price was right here with this line then i would probably mark out this uh, demand zone right there i already know every situation what i'm gonna be looking for so if i just show you some examples right here before we start so you know uh, i'm gonna switch to the four hours and depending on what the four hour shows me so we can either have a bullish range like this same as we have on the daily or we can have a bullish range that just broke uh, bearish one time or if the four hour shows a bearish break that broke two times this is the like three different uh, situations we could have on the four hours right now and depending on which one of those three uh, the four hour shows i'm gonna be doing different things on the 15 minutes where i look for the zones where i'm gonna enter from so in the first case if we have just a bullish range like this then i'm gonna mark out the demand zone of the range on the four hour and inside of here on the 50 minutes i'm gonna be looking for just a normal bullish range to trade from like that or if we get two breaks down on the 50 minutes I'm gonna be looking for a short right there to take price down into this zone, but only if we get uh, a double breakdown. So that's the first possibility. Then the second one, if we have one breakdown on the four hour, I'm gonna be looking for, I'm just gonna be looking for a bullish range to take price long again, to continue up and take out the hat high. And the last case, if we have a double breakdown, I'm gonna still, I'm still gonna take every bullish range that I see in between here every bullish range i'm gonna take uh, i'm gonna look for buys and then every double breakdown i'm gonna look for sells so the same thing as the first one and this applies uh, to when i'm in this zone as well if we get up there only if we get a double breakdown in 15 minutes i'm gonna look for a sell otherwise if we get a one break up i'm gonna look for a buy because i'm overall still uh, wanting to buy because of the daily but if we have two breaks on the four hour I'm willing to take sells because we potentially could be heading down to the daily demand zone. 
and then I'm gonna look for buys inside of there if we get there. But that's just a quick uh, overview of uh, what I'm gonna be looking for when we go down these time frames right here. Okay, so if we go to the four hour and price is right here, this doesn't exist yet. Now I look at the four hour uh, structure, and as we can see, if price is right there, we had this low right here for me, and then this high. And we just broke down one time, but this because it's just one break, I see it more. Like, I see it more as a liquidity grab, and I would rather look for longs again than to shift my bias to shorts. I also like to mark out the low, so I know where the four-hour low is. But then I go to the 15 minutes, and all I do right now, basically from the start of this session, I'm not interested in any of these bearish uh, ranges. So I'm not looking to sell like this supply zone right there. So all I do is I mark out the low. And in this case, we broke that low, but uh, we don't know that yet. This is all I see right here. This is the range and this is the high I want to see get uh, traded through. So we create a new range to the upside. But we have to imagine that we're using the replay tool. So we would have seen like one candle at a time right here. So price would have come down then played around here and then we broke down again right there. So then we created this low, which is the four hour low that we saw before. And we also have this high. I'm still looking for this high to get taken. I don't, I'm not interested in any shorts right now. So as we can see at the clock, this is basically the end of New York around here. So I start again at 8 a.m., which is right there the start of London, se London session for me. And right here we can see we broke the high. So I would have seen price right here now. And this would have been dur during the night for me. So we broke up that high and we created this new high, which is my new target. And then I look, where is that? Where is the protected low? For me, it's right here, this low. And then I look for a demand zone, an unmitigated demand zone. This one is mitigated. So this one, either this candle or this wick, uh, both works. I'm just gonna stick to the wick right now. And in this case, we never got, we never tapped this uh, zone. So there will be no trades for me. So we continue to watch. We broke up again, made a new low right there. So this is just a no trade for me. We made a new high right here and that low. And this is just ugly price action. Like there's nothing unmitigated except for this one candle. So if you want, you could look for a potential uh, entry in here. Maybe you choose to use this zone, but I'm not uh, gonna use it because this range is like really unclear and really ugly for me. So we broke up again right here. Same thing, I'm just following the structure. So this is the new low and this is the demand zone. No retracement, we broke again. <clears throat> This is the new high right here. It's uh, during Asian session, so I wouldn't even be looking right now. If I was looking, I would have used this zone. I would never really retrace to it, so nothing there. Bro broke up again. You look, you can see the time. My session starts at 8 a.m. It's right there. But if I was looking, I would use this zone. Nothing there. So actually. We made that high, and this is still one big range for me because I don't use the wicks when I look for pullbacks. I like to see like full bodies. If we follow the unmitigated zones right here, we have this candle or this wick, and you actually see that you get a reaction from this zone, but uh, not to the next high. But if we go down to five minutes, for example, let's say we just uh, buy the first. Uh, bullish candle like this with a minimum stop loss of five pips that's my strategy for this backtesting session i'm just the first bullish uh, candle that closes I ju i'm just buying it with the stop loss uh, with a minimum stop loss of five pips so in this case if this price right here didn't exist i would be in this buy with a five pip stop loss and what i would do then uh, when i back test when i'm collecting this data is that i would press this uh, camera icon and I would press copy short image then I would switch over to my backtesting uh, spreadsheet here on Notion then I would enter the pair 
uh, Euro USD. Then I will press on this icon to open this row. And there you can see this is all the this is the same as all of this. Then I would paste the image right here. So I have the entry image in the Notion database. So whenever I go back and review these trades, I can just open this and see the trade I took and then all the data. So this is the date when it was taken. So 23 November 9.55. So 23rd of November. And then I include time and I type the time when the entry was and then actually i forgot to add we can add one section so if you want to add something else you can just press this and for example i'm gonna add session like this and i'm gonna drag it there and i'm gonna select type multi-select and then i'm gonna create london new york and Asia. Now you can select the colors you want right here. I'm gonna go with this. So this is during the London session for me. And then I select the entry. In this case, we can call it uh, one candle close. So depending on if you're looking to buy or sell, you to just buy or sell the first candle that closes in that direction. So one candle close. It was a buy, as in the time frame, 15 minutes, entry time frame, 5 minutes. Or R is how, if you see, how, uh, how far the trade ran. So in this case, actually because we clo we entered a trade right there, and then this black candle is the first uh, candle when we're inside of the trade. So if you see, we came up. So most likely the candle came up and then went down and took us out. So the RR would have been 0 0.62. Then I typed it in. Structure. This is the structure RR. That's basically if we would have ran to this next target point. So in this case, it's seven or R. Pips is I like to I like to record the pips as well, and that's the same as the normal or R. So you can see the pips right there, three point one pips. Trades in zone is how many trades you took inside of this uh, the zone you're looking for. So before this trade, I had zero trades before. Break even, no break even. Break even before max or or no. So this is basically if I would have went break even. So this is basically if I like this. If I went break even right here, and then price comes back, takes me out of break even, and then continues. That's basically break even before max or r then you select yes otherwise you just go with the no or r before break even if this happens you record this this is the rr before break even 2.56 so then you select then you write it down right there and the rr on this one becomes whatever new high this makes becomes this new rr but in this case we don't have to write anything right there and note is basically anything you want to comment on or if you want to remember something specific about this trade. So this is basically the whole trade. And if I was using the replay tool, I would have added, this would have been the first picture with just this white candle. Then I would have added another picture after when you see that we got taken out. So it's like a before and after pick. But for now, I just have this picture. But yeah, let's, let's just continue. Uh, so we didn't want to take any more trades in this zone and we just continue to look. Then we, we broke down there. Then we would have been waiting for this side to get broken. We can delete this. So we broke up and I don't know what. I think this was during the bank holiday. And price were just. I, I don't know what happened right here, but something something affected price. 
then we broke up again and we don't seem to get any really big retracements to our zones we just seem to continue up right here and now it's during Asia so I'm, I wouldn't be looking right now I will skip to 8 a.m. because that's the start of my session and then I would look and see that I would have been in this range and I would have used this zone the same thing here we just we got a lot of wicks, but for me this is just liquidity grabs. I can still look for an entry. So if we go down to the 5 minutes, use the same entry. So the first uh, bullish candle close I would have buy bought there with a minimum stop loss of 5 pips. Yeah, then I would do the same, just copy this image, uh, type in the pair, add it into this, and what look what date it was so the 24th 24th and the time that's during London same entry you can add different entries depending on what you use for your entry and then I buy 15 minute 5 minute confirmation stop loss 5 and let's say you don't know if or when you would want to go break even you could just record a bunch of different trades and skip these two parts and then once you have a lot of different trades recorded you can go through everything and hopefully you see a rule that you can implement that gets rid of the losses but keeps the winners so let's say we don't know if we want to go break even at all we just record everything else so in this case we, it was a 4.46 or our trade the structure RR would have been 8.24. The pips on how much it ran was 22.3. Zones, trades in zones, zero, because this was the first one. And uh, let's just skip these two. Note, we can write uh, it recording trades so I can create a break even rule adds to my so let's continue and there isn't really anything more to it it's just i know it can be difficult if you don't already have some rules to follow because then you probably don't know what traits you want to record in that case i would just start and experiment a little and record basically all of it and then trim out like source out the bad the source out everything bad up here and just get more narrow and narrow until you have a strategy that you are satisfied with and that matches your trading uh, psychology then we broke down broke down broke up again created a new high if you look this is mitigated this is the new zone it seems like there was some kind of news or something i would guess so let's just record its trades because so we have something more to go over. But this is like some of these trades you record could be like questionable if you actually would have taken them live, either because of the time or because of some news. So it can be good to keep in mind. And if you don't have a strategy, it's good to record so you can create one. Same date, time. And you can also uh, change the time if you want something else like a 12 hour format or yeah you can change it on this setting right there this is during new york for me you can also add overlap new york same entry by Zero trades in zone. So this is a, this is questionable because this is during the rollover. During this hour, the market is closed. So this is also something you have to keep in mind and take into consideration: is that would you actually be in a trade during this time, or would you have closed it before? So that's something you can write in the note section. Pips eight point seven. 
structure or our four point thirty six SL five break even. You don't know how or when you would want to go break even, so you don't uh, record anything. Put this like right before rollover session. So you can write something like this, for example. But yeah, let's continue. Let's move to the 15 minute. We can remove this once. Uh, then we made a new, it's a new day. We broke this low. And we can actually take a look at the four hour right now, just to update. So we, yeah, we broke down that low, then we broke up again. So the four hour is basically, I mean, everything right here is, you could use this candle if you don't count. Yeah, you could use this candle or just this wick because you see right in between. Right here, it's an imbalance, so it's unmitigated. So this could be your new zone on the four hour. Actually, we just we broke up again right there, but we don't know that yet, so we can still have this zone out. And this is the four hour high. So we'll go back. This is the so this is the only like issue with not having the replay tool is that. You kind of need to use your imagination a little bit more and be honest with yourself of what you're seeing in the moment. So we're right here now. So we would have, so we would not have seen this yet. So all we know is that this is the four hour high and this is the zone. And that means if we get, we have one break, if we get another break, I could be looking for a short. And that's exactly what happened right here. So I would have looked at this zone and you see the time it's exactly the beginning of London session. Yeah, I would be look I would be looking for a short right there to potentially take price down to this four hour zone. So we can look at the five minutes. And in this case we would look for a bearish candle. So this is one. We can use a five pip stop loss. Just record everything. Twenty eight include time. In this case it was a cell, so I should sell right there. But it's the same zone and time frame. Same minimum stop loss, zero trades inside of the zone. And this is also something you have to see if you don't use the replay tool. Imagining how the candle moved before. Because you don't see it as it plays out, you see it after. So in this case, we have a, we closed right there, opened here. So probably we came down and then up and then down again. So in this case, it would have been a 0 0.38 RR. 1.9 pips. Structure RR. 0 0.36. And you can keep this empty if you don't know how or when you want to break even. Or maybe you re-entered right after you got taken out right there. So the same thing as before. The first black candle close. Minimum of 5 pips. Stop loss. And either you delete this one if you already recorded it. Or you can just keep it on. I'm gonna keep it on right there. And then you just repeat the same thing. The name, picture, same date, uh, a little bit later. London, cell 15. And 
no trading zone. No, this is the second trade in this zone. So I write, I write that one right there. Stop loss still five pips. And in this case, we ran 2.64. to structural RR 7.88 so just by looking at this you can compare all the different RRs and maybe you see that 2.5 RR is a good uh, middle ground for you to take partials or profit or even 1.5 RR then you would have three winners. And just by calculating really quick right here, let's say you move, move to break even after you take profit at 2.5 RR. So just by looking at this, let's say 1.5 is our take profit. <laughs> and then with three trades hit, hit 1.5 and then two losses. So right now we would have been up 2.5 RR. This is nothing like set in stone. This is why you collect data so you can play around with these numbers and see what rules fits best with the strategy and how you can optimize your profits but obviously this is not enough data you want to collect like hundreds of hundreds of trades to really get a valid number so yeah we, re we recorded that one maybe you take another trade right here see if it hits 1.5 oh it even hits like and now this is the third trade in this zone so i write i write a like two because two trades before and then we ran 2.48 12.4 and structural or 7.72. This never got hit before because the trade actually enters right there on the open of this next candle. So maybe if you were unlucky with the spreads, 0 0.8, but you shouldn't you should not get taken out there if you trade like FTMO on EU, especially on EU. Okay, so you were wrong about the direction, but still if you took profit at like maybe like 1.5 you would have got two like winning trades right here but if you were looking to take profit at like one to five you maybe break evens or losses right here but that's why we collect data to see these kind of things and how we can change our strategy to better fit the rules we have or if we want to change some of the rules to make better to make a better strategy but like you can see then we broke up and broke this four hour high yeah right there because this becomes the new high for me yeah when once we broke down this is the new high for obviously now after we can see the price is a little shop right here but if we were trading at the time i would use this zone and there isn't really any like pullbacks for me for me this is a huge 15 minute range right here so there wouldn't really be anything for me to trade if I would have to choose a zone, it would have been this one. But then we're like already inside of this four hour zone. And it's pretty late. So I don't really like this. And then we saw that we broke down on the four hour here. Yeah, this is probably why I didn't take much trades these past two weeks. Because price were pretty ugly for me. Then again, like right here, it's a big range. And this obviously depends on how you view structure but so i would have done all this if i if i wasn't recording the video but for now let's just move forward a bit and see like if we can get something more clean this is the range we're in right now and as you can see this is the this is a pretty big uh, demand zone so i was looking at the two hours and i saw this one so that's the one i was looking at to take out this high and then on the 15, uh, 15 minutes, I were just looking for a bullish range. So, yeah, this was during NFP, <laughs> we just dropped like hard. So, we broke up one time, and the time is in London session. So, now because we're inside of this four or two hour demand zone, I'm just looking for a break up on the 15 minutes like we get right there and then i'm looking for the last unmitigated, unmitigated demand zone which is right there this is the new high where i'm looking to take price ah. then i will go down to five minutes for a confirmation 
So the first close of the uh, bullish candle, five pip stop loss, and I'll just record this. Boom. USD. This was two days ago. London session by five pips zero in trades before. You can see it would still be running if you were in this. So this is the max or uh, so far that we have got to, which is twenty two point ninety eight. Pips 114.9 structure RR where just this one 2.18 and then I can write yeah if you want you can write like this something I do still running because because this number can change if it's still running this would have been a really good trade with this uh, strategy and obviously I skipped a lot of trades inside of here that potentially were a lot of minus ones because the price were so ugly but I don't think I have to make the video any longer and just drag out on the time because I think you grasp the like basic principle of how you do it and like I said you can like change the different sections right here if you want to add something or if you want to just remove something that you don't like or don't want but yeah, so in this case we recorded one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades, which obviously isn't enough for any strategy to see if it works or not, because you can get lucky. It's not fair to just base a system out of like seven trades. You need hundreds of trades to get a better reflection of the actual system and what results it can produce. But yeah, let's just play around with the numbers a little. So if you look at this, you can say like, so I want to take profit at 20 or or. And if you do it, like it's obviously it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be the most profitable. But you also have to like keep in mind how often you get these twenty or or trades, and if you and if that would affect your psychology, because you might have to go through a lot of losses before, or if you implement a break even rule. So maybe if you if it run like two point five or ors, it would be break even. So let's try that break even, break even. Yeah, this would not be break even. Not this is yes. So let's actually see. If we ran 2.5 or R, so we would have gone break even right there. So in this case, we would have continued to run. We didn't come back down to break even. So it's still at 22.98 or R trade. So let's say this was our rules. We can just do some quick calculations. Like if you if you would like to take the whole position of a 20 or R, it would have been 20 or R from that trade, and then minus four. So that's 16 or, or on your backtesting session. I don't think a lot of people want to do that. So let's say you take let's say let's say you take 80% off at 4 or or so 4 times 0 0.8 3.2 or or on this trade you take off and then on 4 or ors when this hit 4 or or you also take 80% off so that's 0 0.4 with these two together and then let's say at 10 or or you take 50 percent off you have 0 0.2 percent of the position left then you take shouldn't it just be like one or or let's just say it one or or for now so oh fuck so four so in four or or you take 80 percent off so four or you take 80 percent off you get two trades that run at least the 4 RR and then at 10 and 20 RR you get another you take 50% off and we, let's say that's 1 RR on each so 8.4 RR and then you have 4 losses so minus 4, 4.4 RR profit and that might not sound like a crazy amount but like as long as you're in profit you're making money and depending on how big your account is if you have like a 1 million uh, founded account 4.4 or R if you trade one, if you risk one percent, or if you risk half, this is the 
RR you get. So on a 1 mil account this would be like 22k I think from uh, uh, and this is like two weeks of trading so that's pretty good but the point of this is like to show you how you can start to collect your data and backtest a strategy or just backtest to create a strategy if you don't have one already like I just did with this 4R rule and 2.5 rule break even so I will link this in the description so you can download it and use it yourself Wow.